In this video, I'm going to show you how to construct the response spectrum using Newmark's method. So first let's recall Newmark's method. It gives you two updating rules for the uh, velocity and the coordinate involving two parameters, which are basically weights, uh, gamma and beta. And um, we see that it involves in each formula acceleration expressions as well, uh, both at the old and new times. So we need to get rid of those in order for, for us to be able to uh, iterate using just uh, X naught and V naught. So to do that, we're gonna make use of Newton's laws evaluated at the old and new times. And let's focus on the particular um, case of uh, ground motion described by UG double dot, that's the uh, ground acceleration. And we are solving this equation for the relative motion of the structure, all respect to all with respect to the uh, ground which is moving. So these accelerations and velocities and coordinates are all relative ones. And we see that uh, on the right hand side, and in, in terms of force um, or the forcing term, it's a minus mass of the structure times the ground acceleration. So if you uh, divide through by the mass of the structure and introduce uh, dimensionless quantity zeta, the damping ratio, and also the natural frequency being square root k over m, then the equation of motion can be written again like that, which will write twice at the old and new times um, in order to, to get, get rid of the acceleration expressions. So let's uh, look at this. Um, uh, cal calculator screen here, uh, AG, the ground acceleration I have, that's for L central. And then I uh, delete all the variables to make them clean. And Newmark's uh, updating rule for velocity is implemented here. And that's this formula right here, if you compare. Okay. But notice that right now it involves the new and old acceleration expressions. And Newmark's uh, updating rule for the coordinate says that the new coordinate can be obtained from the old versions of a velocity um, coordinate and so on like that. But again, we see acceleration appearing, which is, is something we need to get rid of. So we write Newton's law twice at the old time. It looks like this, right? Because if you look in this box here, okay, here, on the right-hand side, we have negative, the ground acceleration, which is just data. So it's negative AG at the older time. And the uh, new acceleration plus all these things equals uh, negative times uh, ground acceleration at the new time. And then we make use of these two equations, uh, which contain Newton's law information to solve for the acceleration expressions. So you see now they are in terms of things that we can use. So Newmark is a variable that will contain the solution to this. Newmark X and Newmark V, these are equations for the updated X and V, okay, like this. This is an equation, this is another equation. So let's solve those equations with the substitution of um, acceleration expressions as found in uh, a solution here. Okay, so that's a substitution. Now we have explicit formulas for V nu and X nu. You see it's all in terms of things that we have, such as the acceleration to ground acceleration data or the uh, time step, the gamma parameter, old values of the acceleration data and um, the older value of velocity or coordinate. So now let me put in some uh, numbers. So I'm going to solve it for the case where the natural period of the structure is 50 seconds. And therefore uh, the natural frequency is two pi over 50 seconds. And I'm gonna use a uh, gamma being one half and beta being one sixth. These are typical choices. And uh, I'm gonna solve it for 2% damping and use a time step of 0.02 seconds. So that's my 
numerical values for substitution. So now if you type X new, of course, then nothing happens. It's just a clean variable. But if you substitute what you have found from uh, new mark, okay, those updating rules and the numerical values, then it becomes a simple function that is in terms of older versions of what you're updating and also the ground acceleration data, old and new values. So let's do the same for uh, the velocity. All right, so with these two expressions, I am ready to do some updating on my spreadsheet. So let's uh, now go to my spreadsheet on which I have entered the El Centro uh, earthquake uh, ground acceleration data. Uh, I can press control one to go to the very last okay, entry. So altogether, there are 1560 entries, including, including the initial one value of, sorry, including, including the initial value of zero. And I have here in column D, converted the accelerations into uh, meter per second square units. And here, let me build my counter N. Uh, I will use a formula here equals sequence command uh, starting at zero. So uh, just report K, let K going go from zero to 1559. So if you go to the bottom, you see that it just goes up to 1559. It starts at zero. So uh, I'm gonna build my T sub N now, the times at which I seek my responses. So that will be just uh, N times my step size, which has been entered as DT. Uh, actually, I did not enter it. Let's go back and look. Uh, DT is just an empty variable, okay. but it is specified in here as uh, having an intended value of 0.02. So let me just do that. It's a 0.02, oops, 0.02 seconds times N. So N of course is a variable. So let's uh, do that here. Okay, so if you press control one again, it goes to the very last entry. So it goes up to about 30 seconds or 31 seconds. So now I'm going to put in my formulas for deflection, which I'll call XX and velocity, which I call VV. And let's return to the calculator page and copy those formulas. Okay, so you can use the arrow key to arrow up until you highlight the quantity you wanna copy. That's the uh, formula for updating X coordinates. And we'll press control C here to copy all that and return to the spreadsheet. And uh, okay, first of all, let's put in the zeros as initial conditions. So zero here and zero here. Here now, I'm going to paste a formula here. First, go to the bottom, click in the formu formula bar, and then press equal sign first before you uh, control V and paste all that formula. So now let's see where we need to make references. The new acceleration value is in the current row. And the old acceleration or ground acceleration value is on top of that. And the old velocity is in cell F1, while the old coordinate value is in cell E1. So I have finished entering that formula. You can press enter. And then let's go to that cell and get ready to enter a formula for updating the velocity. So let's return to the calculator, uh, to this calculator page again, and go ahead, arrow up and highlight that velocity formula here and press control C and then return to the spreadsheet where you need an updating formula here for the velocity. So press in the formula bar and press equal sign, don't forget that. 
And then you press Control V to paste the formula and then make specific references to these uh, ground acceleration data. The current one is called new, so it's in D2. The old one is one cell above, so that's in D1. And the velocity data in the older version is here in cell F1, whereas the coordinate data at the previous time step is in E1. So we're done, we press enter twice. And then you uh, pick these two cells together. And in the, okay, let's say you are in the uh, computer view. You can go to the tools button and click on data, fill. And fill these formulas all the way down to the very last uh, row. So you're gonna go through, uh, you know, something like 1500 rows or more. So be patient and also realize that you got to make sure all your formulas are correctly entered. Otherwise, there's going to be a massive amount of a computation done before it even comes out with a some kind of error message. So okay, to go down quickly, you can circle your mouse around a little bit. Uh, but just be careful with this step because uh, if you want to do all these calculations, you, you got to make sure all the formulas have been entered correctly including all the numerical uh, constants. So we're almost there. And uh, when we reach the end, we are gonna click and let go and then wait about four minutes from my experience for this particular problem. Okay, so we go to the very last row where we have data. Okay, okay, here I'm going to click and let go. So you see uh, nothing seems to happen because it's going through a massive amount of calculations. So I'm going to uh, pause the video here and come back in about four minutes time. Actually, uh, three minutes have gone by already. We still don't have the results, but let me tell you what's gonna happen. Once we have the results, I'm going to uh, use this column of deflection values in meters convert them to centimeter values uh, as another list and, and, and plot using a scatter plot um, against the horizontal coordinate of time values in seconds. And then of course, uh, I'm going to check for the global maximum magnitude of the deflection. And uh, that would give us one point on the response spectrum or more precisely the deflection response spectrum for the El Centro earthquake data for a structure with a period of 50 seconds. Uh, the results are still coming, so let me pause the video again. Okay, uh, everything came out in about four minutes and 20 seconds. So now let's see, um, x, x are the deflection values. So I'm going to need them in centimeters. So let me go back to the calculator page. Uh, let me prepare x uh, cm will then equal to 100 times xx. So these are my deflection values in centimeters. Um, at this point, let me insert a new page as a graph. And I'm going to change my graph entry method to scatter plot because I don't really have a function. So uh, scatter plot on the um, horizontal axis, I have my TN, my time values. And on my vertical axis, I have my X in centimeter. So now go to uh, zoom and do a zoom fit, let's say. And it's quite obvious, I think, that this point right here is gonna be the global maximum because this point right here is uh, less than, in magnitude, less than 20 cm, but this point is more. So let's zoom in on that part of the graph. 
Okay, maybe zoom in a bit more. Now, since it's not a function, we cannot use uh, analyze graph uh, max or mean. So let's do a trace, okay, do a graph trace. Now it's uh, tracing this point. You can use the um, right arrow key to go to other points. So here you see uh, the maximum value being about 21 centimeters. Uh, of course, you can go to settings. Let me change the view a bit, change the handheld view. Go to settings, uh, document settings. Um, let's have a bit more. Oh, nine. Go back to the current. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have done it here. Menu settings. Uh, float six, let's say. So you see the maximum deflection is about 20.9. Eight, eight centimeters. So that is a point on my response spectrum. And let's uh, actually compare it to something we know. So uh, I used a period of 50 seconds. So the, um, I mean, in theory, it's at a second curve or 2% damping, but it doesn't really matter anymore once, once you're out here. The uh, coordinate is about 20 centimeters. So uh, we can trust this value here to be correct. Okay, so that's the end of the video.